All right, welcome back to another episode of Stitch Method. I'm really excited to uh, present this one. Uh, this is a lesson on the song Slabo Day by Peter Green and Snowy White. If you do your research, you're going to find that Peter Green, uh, I believe, wrote the chord progression, which we'll talk about because it's wonderful, and Snowy White had the actual performance on the album. Uh, there are many live versions to listen to uh, of both Snowy White and maybe Peter Green playing it, um, but the idea is we're going to study both parts, the chord progression and the lead, and we're going to discover how you can enhance your pentatonic playing and make it sound really uh, delicious and, you know, sultry is the term they use, uh, and, and adopt it and put it in your playing. So let's get right down to it. The song Slabo Day, uh, the, the chord progression, when I first heard this, it mesmerized me. Uh, it's a chord progression that's designed to be ongoing, uh, to kind of be like a groove that ever lasts. And, you know, the song is five minutes long. It's the same chord progression all the way through, providing you a palette, or providing Snowy White or Peter Green, a palette in which they can really develop their sense of soloing. And so here's the chord progression. Now I'm going to play it once. And honestly, this is such a good chord progression. It kind of gets me like a1 steak sauce or like a snake venom, it just sinks into me. So the chord progression really quickly to show you is A minor, and then we do this open string set, which is really a G chord. It's the D, G, and B string, which is really what a G chord is made of. So it's A minor, A minor, G, then to an F, F, G, A minor, and then you come up on the top strings. A minor, G, F, F, G over and over again. It's like a tongue twister, but once you get it, you get it, and it develops, the, the way these, uh, these notes interact, it really develops this melody that you hear in your head, but really it's three chords. Quite beautiful. And now, that is the chord progression you hear when the song opens up, and to me, it really got me right away. I knew the song was going to be interesting, and then the lead came in. When I first heard the lead, I thought it was Peter Green, and again, after some research, it's Snowy White. Now, Snowy White is an amazing guitar player. If you don't know him, research him. He's got a lot of soul, and he plays with his thumb. And I believe that playing with his thumb gives him a little bit of extra tone on his uh, on his strings. But uh, because I play with a pick, I'll be playing with a pick. If you want to play with your thumb, play with the thumb. All right, so if you listen to the song, you're going to hear lead lines. This is where I'll turn my distortion on. You're going to hear these lead lines come in uh, that sound something like this. Some things like this. And I think that each line, excuse me, I think that each line that's presented in this song is beautiful. Now, a couple of things. This song doesn't really have a peak. It's an ongoing kind of groove, uh, like a sexy, sultry groove, mesmerizing thing that I love. And when you listen to these lines that Snowy puts down, he's doing he's doing two tricks which you want to adopt into your song. Number one he is playing like a bow and arrow. What do I mean by that? Well, he's kind of, every line, he's, he's, he's pulling the bow back and giving attention. And the way he's doing that is by not starting on a root note. Nine times out of ten, he's not starting on a root note. And so when you don't start on a root note, it instantly creates tension. So I'm going to go over what's happening here. It's an A minor progression, so most of his song is going to be with an A minor pentatonic. <laughs> You'll see him play him in the form one. You'll see him also play in the thinner end of the form two. Right. You're also going to see him play a little bit in the form three. And you're going to see him play in the form four. If you're unfamiliar with these, you can check out my five pentatonic boxes link below and my never lost pentatonic. Now, um, when you hear him playing, I'm going to show you this. Okay, so let's go over the intervals really quickly. One, flat three, four, five, flat seven, one, flat three, four, five. Flat seven, one, flat three, and then this flat three, four, or four, flat three, oh my god, one, flat seven, five, okay? And then back to your four. They're, they're everywhere. He starts this line on the four, slid into the five. 
grabs the flat seven, grabs the flat three, hits the flat seven again, hammers to the one, or slides to the one. Okay? And you can hear, because that line started away from the one, it moves towards the one. And the power of the pentatonic is there's only five notes. And if you start away from the one, you're really going to end up getting to the one, and it's going to sound good. So you want to practice getting these lines by not starting on the one. So here's the line straight from it. Now we're going to do more of this, but in other, the other trick, or one of the other tricks that Snowy does, is that he slides a lot, and it creates this uh, wonderful movement, all right? And so when you're soloing... Oh, really? Just fire me, right? And you want to try sliding around. So let me play in a little bit of form one, a little bit of form two. I'm not going to start on my root note. In order to not start on the root note, you need to know where your root notes are. In this case, they are your A's, because we're in an A minor pentatonic. So let's see if we can capture that feel. sliding on purpose just so you can hear how much uh, it affects the, so the, the sound. You want to really try and slide when you think it's right. So now we have these two things. Number one, don't start on the root note. Number two, do some sliding. And you'll see, I'm going to put everything together for you. So you have a form one and form two. He also does this in the form four. Now in the form four, he does a little bit different. Let me show you where it is on the guitar. You have 12, 15, 12, 15, 12, 14, 12, 14, 13, 15, 12, 15. Cool. So now, the root note is that 14th fret of the G, flat third is here, and you have your four here. Again, you'll hear him bend that four to the five. And then he's gonna play this guy here. All right, four, five, uh, sorry, uh, really, flat three, four, five, flat seven. And this is a common move where you're taking the four, bending it to a five, and then hitting the flat seven of your pinky on the 15th fret. And now, what I just did right there is something you hear a lot in the song. He sometimes uses the full A minor scale, but in particular, he uses the notes C, B, and A. And he'll create these lines that have tension by pulling the bow back, by not starting on the root. And then, he ends up on the C, and he'll walk C, B, A. On a form one pentatonic, the C is here. And so you'll get these you'll get these moves that are uh, you know sliding, not starting on the pentatonic, and some diatonic or minor scale movement back to the one. I don't really hear a lot of uh, minor scale playing in this. It's strongly pentatonic, and then as we get to the one, just a little hop, skip, and a jump down a full minor scale. And so let's just see if we can kind of get that vibe here. I can do it down here if you wish. Let's see. Let's see if we can do this. There it is, right there. All right. So you're hearing it. So now we have stay away from your root when you start, slide a lot, and also dibble dally with the A minor scale, the C B A. You're going to hear also uh, at the ending this fade out, which is beautiful, which is G to the A, right here, G, 12th fret, form 4 pentatonic, G, hits the A, but immediately bends the A to the major second, which is the B, or bends it up to the minor third, which is the C. And so you can throw this move in here, which I absolutely love, flat 7 to 1 
to major second or minor third. Let's see. Okay, now, so, with three or four rules, stay away from the root note when you start, think about the bow and arrow. Um, slide, really slide a lot, it adds a lot of romance to the, to the pentatonic. Number two, uh, sorry, number three, if you have the ability to put in some minor scale stuff in your jam, or in case this song, use it slightly at the end of your phrasing. And number four, uh, when you're fading out, I really think like getting to the root note and then changing the root note up to the major seconds and thirds really like, it's like, oh, he almost did it, but then you tease them. So let's see if we can put all this together over the um, awesome backing track of Slabo Day. Simple enough. Now, you'll notice there's no peak to the song. It just rides out, and it's a great way to practice this. So hopefully this is a simple lesson. Now, I can keep on going. I want to show you one thing. Sorry, it's a giant squirrel at the top of my window. One thing is you notice I went up here. One move I forgot to mention is this is the 4-1 pentatonic, just an octave higher, and he's going to rake, and then play the B. There's your A, A, B, C. You'll hear him, A, B, C. Same thing here. Sorry, this is A, B, C. It's not the same thing. But A, B, C. And then into the minor pentatonic. Alright? So, a simple video, but Peter Green is the man for writing this chord progression. Snowy White does a great job of playing something very kind of different over this. Something we can learn from. So you take these ideas, put them into your own pentatonic jams just to make your guitar playing sound interesting and if you want to see something interesting as well you know watch some of the live videos or listen to them on YouTube because you can hear differences in the approaches one of them is very pentatonic like natural riff heavy where in the form one and it sounds more like uh, a regular blues song but then you hear Snowy White's performance and it doesn't and what he does is magical um, I will mention that on my Patreon channel I will have videos on how to practice all these things separately so if you're interested in practicing with me you can check it out patreon.com slash stitch method other than that I have live group um, lessons coming you can always check stitchmethod.com if you want to participate in live groups and work with me I'll stop talking thank you so much for being here bye bye